Today we're joined by journalist Chris Van Vliet. Chris has worked as an entertainment journalist in television since 2005. He has a, he has a wildly popular YouTube channel where he interviews celebrities and what wrestling stars. Since 2010, he has worked in Cleveland, Ohio, and Miami, Florida, uh, Florida, including multiple Emmys. His YouTube channel has over to 250,000 subscribers and nearly 85 million views. In July, in July 2019, he created a podcast version of his feature-length YouTube interview that regularly charts in the top 20 podcasts. Hmm, that's pretty big. Okay, if you have any viewer questions, please put them in the comments or any other questions or in the qu question card. Chris, thank you for joining us today. Well, Bob, Tom, thanks so much for having me on, guys. It's, it's always a pleasure to talk with fellow Canadians. First, happy birthday. It was your birthday oh. yesterday, and it seemed very pizza-filled. Yeah, well, pizza's my favorite food, as it should be everyone's favorite food, I think. I uh, so, pizza. yeah, me too. That's so I, I had not, not only a pizza, but I had a pizza-themed birthday cake. So it was yes. like pizza followed by pizza. It was pizza followed by pizza, and probably for the rest of this, the day, pizza and pizza, pizza. There's going to be more pizza birthday. today. Yesterday, the it's word good. of the day was pizza, everybody. Okay. So, Absolutely. Oh, uh, what type of pizza do you like? That's question. I'm a pepperoni. I'm a pepperoni pizza guy. I don't mind um, pepperoni, but my I'll favorite eat, is cheese. I'll eat any pizza. Okay. Mm, so mm. the pizza pizza filled. Love it. Okay. okay. What's, What's the song? Do you guys have Pizza Seventy Three where you are? Yes. Is that an Alberta thing? Okay. Uh, what was the celebration this week bigger for getting a haircut? Or for your birthday? Oh, the haircut for sure. Uh, and what a great question. Thank you for asking that. The haircut for sure, because we can't really do much right now. We're all in quarantine. We're all in lockdown. The birthday celebration feels like every other day. There's not, <laughs> I feel like we aren't able to do anything special because there's nowhere we can go. So the haircut for sure. Who were some of your role models growing up in Canada? I really looked up to a lot of the Canadian broadcasters and you guys might be too young to remember people like George Strombolopoulos, who was a much music VJ. He went on to host a show on uh, the CBC. That was a you know big influence of mine because I love the way that he did interviews that didn't feel like interviews. I love that he did these interviews that were like conversations. So George, for sure. Uh, I was a big Joe Rogan fan. I know Joe Rogan wasn't, you know, isn't Canadian, but Fear Factor was on in Canada. And then, of course, his podcast became wildly popular. I just love people who were broadcasters but didn't feel like broadcasters. We have asked uh, Strombo to appear on the the one with Tom and Bob, too. Oh, Alex did, asks, did he get back to you? No, he didn't. Uh, Alex oh. asks... Who is your favorite wrestler that you've interviewed? Mm, so my favorite wrestler and my favorite wrestler who has who I've ever interviewed is the same person. And it's, uh, there's a little hint for you. People's eyebrow. The Rock is my favorite wrestler. And he meant so much to me growing up. And The Rock is everything you want him to be in a human. He's kind and he's nice and he's funny and he's awesome. So it's definitely The Rock. How many times has The Rock given you the finger? Only twice. Um, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good reputation. The people's finger, of course. Abe asks, "What interview has impacted you the most?" Or Abe, I don't know. Hmm. I think the interview that, like, where I've taken something away from it the most, was the interview I did with John Cena last year at WrestleMania. So that interview was really special to me for a bunch of reasons. But number one. He didn't do any interviews the whole weekend. I was the only interview he did at WrestleMania in New York last year. And it was set up through a mutual friend of mine. But number two, he just had great advice during that interview. And he said something in that interview that sticks with me every single day. And he said, control the controllable. And I think that too often people focus on things that they have no control over. So that's, that's something that's really had a big impact on me. And I see in the chat, my friend Nikki Novak's talking about Swiss chalet. And as a Canadian, it's the one thing I miss more than anything. It's really good. I love it. It's good. 
That dipping sauce, right? You guys with me on the dipping sauce? Yeah. Yeah, you Tom is. Yeah, I am. I love, I love them. it. Okay, thank you, Tom. My favorite food actually is pierogies. I love them. Oh, you know, I haven't had a pierogi since I moved to the States. That's but again, I'm pierogies. Yeah, I'm pierogies. Maybe you can ship some. Oh, please. Oh, I can't ship food, so. Oh, man. How much pre preparation do you do for a typical interview? I'd say that you can't be prepared enough for an interview. And I think that if that's doing research about them, if it's watching videos about them, if it's finding out what their news stories are right now, um, I think that the more prepared you are, the better that you can be. Because if the interview veers off to the right, uh, you're ready to travel with that interview to the right. And I think that uh, you want to know as much as you possibly can about that person so that when they start talking about something that you didn't expect, you're right along with them for that. And if they talk about something we didn't expect, we just go along with it. We're pretty much, we're not ready, but we're ready. Where That's the, right. Where's the weirdest place an interview has ever gone on you? I'm going to go, I'm going to answer this with a, the weirdest physical place because I was not expecting to do this interview that I did with Chris Jericho last year uh, in the back of his car. I, I went, he was recording this podcast live and I thought we would do it in like the studio where the podcast was being recorded. And I got there and there was a huge crowd of people and he said, let's just do it in my car. It'll be more private and away from everybody. So that's my, uh, that's my honest answer about, uh, you know, the weirdest place. We lit, like the cameraman sat in the driver's seat, spun his head around and filmed it while I sat next to Chris Jericho. Wow, that's weird. Okay. It was cool. That's abnormal. It was it was strange, but it was fun and memorable oh, for sure. His interview, Tom's interview with Chris was more comfortable. I'm guessing. Well, my mm. for me it was the most comfortable because I was asleep. Well, <laughs> it, was it was not comfortable because he told me to shut up. But whatever. <sighs> Did he put you on the list? Uh, I don't I know. know. We don't know. You just made the list. We will never know. Because it's probably dead. The list is dead. Uh, it's probably burned. Dead. It's probably burned. Our, our question and the viewer asks, who has been your favorite guest to interview? Well, I'm going to have to say The Rock again because The Rock means, you know, so much to me. In fact, The Rock means so much to me that I have this hanging on my wall uh, from one of the one of the interviews I did with The Rock. It's like, oh, hey. Just hanging out with the rock there and then he autographed this magazine cover so uh there you go it says to chris had fun dwayne johnson so that's uh, that's gonna be my answer there the rock and then uh show off that little photo there hot garden stomp asks what size shirt do you wear uh extra medium yeah no the, the smaller the better here's a little secret for you guys yeah, I work out a little bit, but uh, the smaller the shirts you wear, it's, uh, it tricks people into thinking that you're actually strong. So you'll see a lot of wrestlers doing this. Now, I'm just joking. I wear a medium shirt. Uh, uh, anything smaller does not fit. Abe asks, does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, of course not. Oh, jeez. I will eat pineapple on pizza. I don't like, no, pineapple, no, not on pizza. No, no, I'm, no, fruit. I'm against fruit does not belong on pizza, people. No. Mushrooms on pizza? Paul just made a list. Nope. Yeah. I have your own or cheese, that's it. I'm with you. I like a basic pizza. Pineapple, uh, pineapple is very, me and my dad will eat pineapple on pizza. Peppers well, pizza? I'm not oh. sharing pizza with you guys then. Jeez. Oh, uh, what's your favorite underrated wrestler? Uh, it's got to be my friend Dolph Ziggler, who I don't think has been given a fair shot. I think that that's a guy who should be a 10-time world champion. And I feel like every time he starts to get on a run, they kind of like take it away from him. So Dolph Ziggler, for sure, completely underrated. Dolph Ziggler has appeared the most on your channel. Is he waiting in your front yard to be for you to be interviewed how, again as we're, we are talking? How did you know he was here? Yeah, I see, I'm, I'm looking out the window right now. Hey, I'll be there in a second, Nick. Yeah, don't. Yeah, just give me like give me like ten more minutes. 
sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, he follows me around basically every day saying, hey, can we do another interview, man? Uh, no, Dolph's the best. I mean, he's been such a kind man since I did my first interview with him eight years ago. And I've been so fortunate to be able to interview him as many times as I have. And, you know, he's been someone that I've been able to reach out to and ask like, advice from. He's cool. We would love to speak to him, actually. I'd I'd love to have him back on my show too. We should all like we should do like a big group interview. All of them. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Tom, Chris, Dolph. Yeah, three people interviewing one person. That's gonna be crazy. We can interview <laughs> each other. A huge Zoom live on YouTube. Oh my god! A huge Zoom live on YouTube. This is there we go. Everybody. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Pride twenty one. Uh, baseball asks. What is your what is the difference between TV viewers and YouTube viewers in your opinion? That's a good question and I think it uh, the biggest difference is on TV you're forced to watch what's on TV when it's on TV. The thing about YouTube is you can find out the exact or seek out the exact things that you're looking for. So you got like a like a hyper dialed in audience on YouTube um, that are people that want to be there want to want to be watching the things. So I think that your YouTube fans, your YouTube viewers, are people who are seeking you out. I think on TV, oftentimes, you know, you're changing channels and you leave it on a channel and you just start watching it. And that doesn't happen on YouTube. Uh, wow. Chris, what is your shoe size? Uh, you know, if you don't, uh, Dr. Moorcraft at notice, you, your song, sock game is strong. Yeah, I do, uh, do have a lot of socks. Uh, I wear a size 12. Oh, look who's in here. David Benoit is in the chat right now. You know, Chris Benoit's son. Hey, what's up, Dave? How are you? Uh, Hop Garden Stomp asks, how tall are you? I am five foot ten. The same height as Dolph Ziggler. Well, Jack Nine Attack asks, if you were a triple team, who would you face? Like, I, I would be, I'd be in a, a tag team with two other people? Yeah. Or who would you face? Oh, I'm going to face the elite. I think that they'd be the best. If, that, if this is a, a three-man or six-man match, I'm going to go with uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. What a great match that would be. Not that I'd be good in the match, but they, they can make anybody look good. Who's your teammates? Who are my teammates? You guys. Perfect. Done. Bob, Tom, Chris versus the elite. <laughs> The, 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 guys guys, the guys who can interview versus the guys who can't interview. <laughs> Perfect. And we'll just stand there with microphones while they wrestle. <laughs> no, we'll just stand there throwing our microphones. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually I'm going to run away. <laughs> we'll just use the wires on our microphones if they have wires and just slap them with them. Yeah. Yeah. And trip them with yeah. them. I like it. Yes. We, this is going to go so well. <laughs> we can call it the hockey club. I don't really know. Canada, I don't know what. I don't know how. I don't know what. I don't. This is gonna get crazy if that does happen. Okay, next question. Um, Poppy Saplito asks, when you come to uh New York, when the pandemic is over, can I interview the greatest interview ever over lunch for my YouTube? Oh, in that in that example, am I the person they're talking yes. about? Uh, yeah, of course, sure. I love doing interviews. Whether I'm the one asking the questions or whether I'm uh, on the receiving end of questions like this one. I think somebody asked if we are twins. Yes, we are twins. I'm five minutes older than him, so just to mm. clear that up. Uh, Bob is the older brother. How did your chest after being chopped by Sean Spears? And Ty Dillinger in the yeah. academy. Yeah, yeah. So Tyler Breeze and uh, Sean Spears and all their students gave me 20 chops there. Boom, to the chest. Ooh. Yeah, it hurts. That stung. I feel like I lost feeling in my chest for a good part of the rest of that day. Took uh, six days to heal up, but uh, we're good to go now. Oh yeah, I had I had bruises and welts and handprints all over my chest for six days. Sean was not much nicer to us when he we met him in Edmonton. Sean's a very nice man. Yes. But when you you know. Look, Our Ronnie friend. the person. Ronnie the person, you know, that's his real name. Ronnie's a very nice man. Sean Spears, when you're in a ring with him, 
you know, he's an intense individual. Travis Doodles, if you ask how many title belts do you own? Ah, oh, Travis is a good man. Um, I have six. So you can see at least two of them there. And then if we scroll down, there's, there's four in this right there. There's uh, an Emmy on top of that. So there's four in there. And then one laying over here on the ground, and then one over there somewhere. So six in total. How much Emmys do you have? I have four. I have four Emmys. Only one is on display here. The other ones are in my living room for when you guys come over so we can, when we get ready to prepare for our match, we can see those other ones. And I'm just probably going to sit there and be like, Don't <laughs> Me too. That. Don't worry, I'll have pizza without pineapples on it. Yay! We'll fling pineapples, people, we'll. Fling pizza with pineapples at them. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, because you shouldn't be eating pizza with pineapples on it, right? I mean, I'll probably eat one, though. No. No, we're throwing it only. Uh, it's your boy, Will190. Who is... Oh. Who is your least favorite wrestler? MJF. Uh, my least yes! favorite wrestler and my least favorite person. And if you've seen the interview I've done with MJF, or you've seen any of the press scrums I've done with MJF, you will completely understand why I don't like him and why nobody should like him. He's a terrible, terrible person. I've never seen MJF. He sucks. Yeah, he's the worst. Okay, I'm not going to get into that because I have no idea who he is, and I'm glad I don't have an idea who he is. Good, you don't need to know who he is. Fan edits 567 asks... Uh, if you would ever introduce CM Punk and ask him his thoughts on CM Punk, what? Well, I interviewed CM Punk once, uh, oh. right after he left WWE. It was a quick interview, but I'd love to do another interview with him. I think he's such an interesting individual. I think he's super talented, and I think that the way that he uh, crafted that whole run he had with the pipe bomb was brilliant. So, yeah, if CM Punk is willing to do an interview i'd love to make that happen travis studios asks what is your ultimate goal in your career well my goal uh since i started in my career has been to be excited for what i'm going to do at the start of the day and be proud of what i've done at the end of the day so that's that's always been my goal i would love to be doing some more acting in movies. I'd love to be hosting a, a bigger television show. I want my YouTube channel to get a million subscribers. But at the end of the day, the goal is uh, you know, to be happy about everything I've accomplished that day. Pride 21 Baseball asks, what sports did you play growing up? Growing up, I played a lot of baseball. Baseball was my number one sport. Of course, I played hockey growing up in Canada. Everybody plays hockey, I feel like. I know. So I played... I played hockey. I was on the high school wrestling team. In elementary school, I was on the volleyball team and the basketball team. But baseball and bass fishing were my main sports. David Benoit asks Brody Benoit. Lee. David Benoit. 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 Benoit asks Brody Lee or John Moxley. What do you think, Bob? Tom, who's going to win? Who's going to win the AEW championship? I want to pick John Moxley. I agree. I don't I like know. John. John's a really good guy. I really like what they've been doing with Brody Lee. I think that he's actually had a chance to show who his character really is. But I think John Moxley retains the title for a little while longer. It's Michael like Two E asks, if you couldn't interview anyone you haven't, who would it be and why? Vince McMahon is at the top of that list. So that's someone I want to interview more than anybody. Uh, you guys know who Vince McMahon is, right? Yes. Yeah. So you didn't know who Brody Lee was, so I was just making sure. Um, yeah, Vince, Vince, I'm just joking with you. Vince McMahon, um, look, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now if it wasn't for what Vince McMahon created with, obviously, WWF, which became WWE, which became all of the wrestling that we have now because of the popularity of that. So Vince McMahon. So if you guys know him, let him know yeah. I want to do an interview with him. Actually, we don't know him. We just know oh, his sweet. name. Yeah. We know his name. I don't know him. I don't know we him don't personally know. either. I wish we I mean, didn't like, know we, him. That would be actually, nice. Actually, we might have enough ties towards wrestling that we could get him. We're actually looking to talk to uh, Tony Khan. No, oh, that'd be – Tony's a great guy and a brilliant businessman who has an incredible mind for the business. So I, I hope you guys get to do an interview with Tony. That'd be a really, really good one. 
your coverage of wrestling is completely different than almost anything out there. Was that a conscious effort on your part? I just didn't want to do interviews that felt like interviews. That's really where it started for me. Is I was just genuinely interested in having these conversations with people. And I just wanted them to be conversations that happened to have a camera or a microphone. So yes, it was a conscious effort to make them conversational, but I wasn't going out of my way to say, I want to do this completely differently than everybody else. I was just basically saying, here's what I like, and I'm going to put it out there and <laughs> hopefully other people will like it too. It was announced you had joined AEW back in July. Are you still part of their team? You're not listed as part of their broadcasting team on the website, which we know means nothing. I was never I was never part of the team. I was asked to be part of the first episode, which was such an honor to be part of that first episode on Dynamite. We were live in Washington, D.C. on October 2nd. And to be part of the broadcast for the first time that wrestling was on TNT for the first time in 19 years was such an incredible honor. So when they asked me, hey, would you want to be part of this thing on October 2nd? I was like, uh, yes. And then I was fortunate to be a part of a, an episode a couple weeks later when we went to Charleston, West Virginia. So it's been so cool to be part of it in these, you know, the smallest way, but it's been so cool. And I'm a big fan of what AEW is doing. They're pretty amazing, actually. I've watched their stuff. It's so good. They're changing the game. Uh, if you weren't interviewing wrestlers, what would you be doing? Well, interviewing wrestlers is just one of the things that I do. So, you know, my main job is I'm a TV host. I've been interviewing celebrities and musicians for my whole career. So interviewing wrestlers is just like a nice little cherry on top of things that I get to do, especially during COVID right now. It's cool that we're able to do these interviews via Skype or Instagram Live or whatever. And uh, I'm glad that other people are enjoying them as well. Uh, you're the co-owner of, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Woo! Tungsten? Tungsten. Woo! Tungsten. Uh, and, and outdoors, outdoors Brad. How, how did you become involved in bass fishing? Is this it's a company, company named after the first legendary. legendary. Woo! Yeah, give me your best. Woo! I'm not gonna. Woo! I'm still Woo! 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 So I've been bass fishing my entire life. It was one of my first passions. I started bass fishing when I was four years old. Um, fishing in the Kawartha Lakes region of Ontario. And I've just been so blown away by how much I love bass fishing. So my fishing partner and I started this outdoors brand where we sell tungsten fishing weights. And the woo is mostly what you catch or what you say when you catch a giant fish. You know, woo! you're so excited because you caught this huge fish. But of course, I'm a wrestling fan. So we can tie it into the fact that you know, Ric Flair famously says woo as well. So, uh, the two kind of combine both of my passions, fishing and wrestling, together in one. Uh, how often you do you get out fishing in normal times? Not often. Not so much anymore. Especially, like, when times are normal. Normal. I'm usually traveling a lot. Um, so I haven't been fishing as much as I'd like to. But, you know, when I was fishing a lot, I'd say it was like 100 to 150 days a year. Tara on TV asks if Chris Smith misses his, if Chris misses his, his movie, Junket Friends. So Tara is one of my very good friends. Uh, she lives in Arizona. Hi, hi Tara. And when it, you've probably seen these interviews that I've done with celebrities. They're on my YouTube channel. And those are called Junket interviews, where instead of the, the person who's in the movie that's promoting the movie and doing the interviews about the movie, instead of them flying all around everywhere and doing these interviews, they all fly all the reporters into one spot and then the person, the actors will just sit in a room and then the interviewers will come through one by one. So I miss Tara and everybody else who I was doing these celebrity interviews with when the world was a little bit more normal. When the world was proper. Proper. Okay. Uh, Spike CM. Uh, oh, next. Okay. Jason okay. Balling 90 asks, in AEW's lighter match Saturday, who do you think will... Uh, think, who do you think will the mystery participant will be? Mm. Well, I don't think it can be anyone that's been recently released from WWE because they're all under contract 
with their non-compete until July 18th. So I don't know. Who do you guys think it should be? I don't know. Mm. Somebody, somebody that's probably never been. Yeah. Marty Skrull. No, he, he's Marty Skrull, you said? Yeah. No, he's, a, he's under contract with Ring of Honor, so I don't think so. I don't know. This, this is what this is what's great about wrestling. It's gonna be Sean Spears. Sean Spears. There we go. Sean Spears, maybe. So the gift of wrestling asks, uh, what was it like when Anne Hathaway called him out of that weight question? So here's what happened. So I was interviewing Anne Hathaway, uh, who's obviously a very famous actress. And photos of her in the new Batman movie had just come out. And she had, like, really gotten into amazing shape to play Catwoman. And I just formed my question not in the best possible way. And this is actually a good lesson for you guys here. Uh, I, I said, look, you've been in, you're in great shape. You've gotten great shape to play Catwoman for The Dark Knight Rises. How much weight did you lose to get you know, into shape? And she was like, ah, how much weight did I lose? Ah, what a forward young man you are. And was like kind of half pretending, half serious that I offended her. Um, but here's the thing. Actors talk about their weight gain or weight loss all the time. Christian Bale talks about how he gained weight to play Batman or how he lost it in The Machinist. Uh, Renee Zellweger talked about the weight that she gained to play Bridget Jones. So I don't think that it was a, you know, a bad question to ask an actor like, how did you get into this uh, shape? But uh, I probably could have asked it in a better way. But she had fun with it. It's now become a viral YouTube moment um, that people still ask about. And that happened eight years ago. Who or what are your inspirations? Um, well, my parents are a big inspiration for me. You know, my parents have been together for 40, this will be their 44th year together. 44th? Yeah. Um, 40, no, 46th year. Uh, so they're a big inspiration for me. And my parents have set a great example of hard work and dedication and love for each other. So they, they're a first and foremost. So Dirk and Helen, I know they're not watching because my dad doesn't have Instagram and my mom uses it like once a month. So uh, we'll let them know that we said these nice things about them. Yes. And probably get a clip and send it. Okay. Mm, yeah. That's a good, we have a YouTube version. Oh, there we go. We'll send them a YouTube clip. Yes, so we have a YouTube version. That's good. Everybody should check that out. That's a good version. Massey Twins, uh, uh should watch some other videos. So you set, you set a goal to do three week, two wrestling, three wrestling interviews a week. How has COVID-19 affected that? Well, COVID-19 is both making things easier and making things harder to do interviews. Easier because I feel like a lot of us our schedules aren't as busy. We're at home. We're all, you know, we've got a lot of free time. But I like to do my interviews in person. So the fact that I can't fly or drive to do these interviews, you know, makes it a lot more difficult. The goal this year, it's three interviews a week would be a lot. And there's a lot to track those down. So I'm actually doing one for sure. And then two, maybe, you know, like if I can get two interviews in, like this week, I have two interviews. You already have an interview. You... No, we're interviewing him, but it still counts, I'm guessing. Sure, we'll call it. Yeah, why not? Cool. Yeah, sounds great. What have you learned about yourself during COVID and physical distancing? Well, I've learned uh, how important it is to have connections with people. And I think you guys have probably found this too. You find out who, who really means the most to you during this time. And, and who is it that's still keeping in touch with you? And who is it that, you know, is, is keeping tabs on you and making sure you're okay? I think the bigger thing I miss about this is I miss going to the gym. I found out how much I miss, like, the gym. I don't drink coffee. So I start every day by going to the gym. And I, I think realize, like, I don't enjoy doing workouts at home. I don't find them as motivating as going to the gym. So gyms are opening uh, back up here next week. So I'm excited about that. That must yeah. be exciting. Yeah, restaurants open up this weekend. Gyms next week. Excuse me, I'm going to drink some water here. Yeah, no gyms here yet. I wish there was bookstores here. I'm really Yeah, sad. but we can take, we can uh, rent stuff from, from the gym, so. Because there's this new uh, book that's coming out, and I'm really excited for it, but it's not. But I'm going to have to order it, and it will take like two weeks to get here, so. Oh, oh man.
So it kind of makes me sad a bit. But are you tired of washing your hands yet? Mm, I got a really like nice smelling soap from Bath and Body Works. So I, I'm kind of excited to wash my hands. I'm excited to clean myself because I got some nice soap. You have pomegranate. Yes. It, yes. it, it smells good. Uh, 313 Baller asks, would you like to interview MJF again? Oh, I don't know. I really don't like MJF. And if I had to spend any time in his presence again, I feel like I might want to puke because he's such a terrible person. So if I had to do an interview with him, I guess I would. But MJF's not just the worst person I've interviewed. He's the worst person I've ever met. So, yeah, probably probably not. Let's just hope that MJF doesn't watch this. <laughs> if he does, I mean, look, MJF knows he's a terrible person. MJF is well, yeah, MJF's well aware that nobody likes him at all. <laughs> so uh, this would be no surprise to him. Yeah, MJF not been smart and it's not so you can change people liking you but he's just a better. he's just not a nice man yeah bike cm asks how did you uh come to do your job as a wrestling interviewer what well, kind of happened by accident uh, to be honest i was working for a tv station and we would have wrestlers come to town basically to say like you know raw was in town or smackdown was in town or impact wrestling we would do like a 10 or 15 minute interview and we would only end up airing like 30 seconds of it on TV. And I thought, well, I asked questions that I thought were interesting as a wrestling fan. Other wrestling fans must find this interesting too. So I just started posting the long form interviews on my YouTube channel and that was it. I just started putting them up there thinking other fans might enjoy it. So it kind of happened by accident. Uh, I started posting those in 2011. Some early interviews were posted then, and that's kind of how it happened. I realized that other wrestling fans enjoyed this type of interview and these, this type of access to wrestlers, and that was really it. You interviewed Vam... Vam... Piro. Piro earlier today. How did that go? So, the, the, yeah, I actually just finished the interview with Vam Piro, and then I actually ended it so I could jump on with you guys and do this interview live. Well, so yeah. it was cool. Yeah. And you were so actually... I very, very quick to do it. Did, oh, of course. You know, I mean, oh, thank you for asking me. Meatbag asks if there's an interview where Chris is being interviewed online he can find. Well, yeah, it. yeah. I've done a lot of interviews. I mean, I'm doing one right now. I, you know, I'm being interviewed right now. So you can find this one online. But uh, yeah, recently I was, I, was on, uh, I was on Primetime with Sean Mooney, an episode that actually dropped today on his podcast. Sean Mooney worked as a, an interviewer for WWE for many years as a legendary interviewer. I was on Vicky Guerrero's podcast recently. I was on Desert Island Graps, which is Russell Talk's podcast. Um, awesome. I've been on a lot, yeah. So you can, you, can definitely, uh, you can definitely find them if you're looking out there. King Nick, 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 King Nick Nicholas asks, who's the most underrated wrestler in AEW? The most underrated wrestler in AEW? Hmm. Oh, who are we pointing at here? <laughs> um, I think that, eh. yeah, I think, I think Darby Allen, we're going to see a lot out of Darby Allen. I think that he's, he's already a star, but I think he's going to be a huge star and a future champion. Uh, I know that I don't like MJF, but it's, uh, it's hard not to see the potential in him as a performer and as a, you know, a promo guy. Uh, I, I don't think that MJF's underrated by any means, but I just know that the future looks bright when you look at the, you know, the young guys like MJF, who's 23, 24, Darby Allen, who's 22 years old. I think that those are the types of guys that we're going to be talking about five and 10 and 15 years from now. Maybe not MJF, but yeah, maybe not yeah, MJF. I still don't like MJF, okay? I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, no, probably nobody. Okay. Wrestler Collection 21 asks if you were a fan of Warrior or Stinger. In your Ultimate team. Warrior. Ultimate. I, 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 I. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A fan of both of them, although I was more of a WWF fan. So I was definitely more of a, an Ultimate Warrior fan than I was of a Sting fan. But 
you know, it's, not, it's hard, hard not to have a massive amount of respect for both of those legends. Daniel M. H. asks, what do you think um, of your fan base? Oh, I think, I, think, like, I think anybody watching this right now is super kind and super nice. And the fact that anybody watches the interviews that I do on YouTube still blows me away. So I think it's a, awesome. a really cool thing to be able to connect, you know, yeah, actually, with, recently, with everyone. Thank That's you right. for joining us today. Maybe we can, once this is all over, we can get together and inter do a lot together interview, not just camera to camera. And Let's do it. Thank I'll bring the pizza. Us. Thank you for inviting us into your home, technically. Because technic. okay, I'm not going to say technically about it anymore. See uh, ya. See Thanks ya. for joining us. Bye. Thanks, guys. Be well. well. Again in the future. Let's do it. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you guys. You're awesome. Hey, Bob, Tom, best of luck to you guys. What a nice shirt, too. <laughs>